In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church remembers St. Juan Diego, the visionary at Guadalupe, and as as Pope St. John Paul II called him, a model of humility and I don't know if it's coincidental or more likely providential that his feast day and the apparitions took place during the season of Advent. And so this model of sanctity for us, St. Juan Diego, as a model of humility is a, is a good, uh, gives us a good opportunity to look at also that important virtue which draws to us the grace of the Holy Spirit and of Christ. So Juan Diego, just a few details about the saint, he was born in 1474, just seven years after the Aztec, uh, a ferocious tribe, conquered his people, the Nahua people. And so St. Juan Diego himself belonged, as it was already, to the, you could say, the peasant class, and then the peasant class of a conquered people. So he really was, uh, even by worldly figuring, in a very humble position. He was not baptized until he was about 50 years old. And that was only seven years or so before then he was favored by Our Lady to become her messenger. Juan Diego was a devout man and would travel many miles on foot, barefoot, through the mountains to receive instruction in the faith from the Franciscan mission. Uh, Apparently it was about 14 miles or so of trekking through uh, trails and mountains, but he did this devotedly every week to learn the faith that saves. And so it was on one of these long treks through the mountains on this date, December 9th, in 1531, when he first saw Our Lady, and her appearance is immortalized in the tilma, and we have the image of it above the altar here. And she's, she appeared to him as one of his own people, as a young woman, and uh, she was also evidently with child, as, as the symbolism of her clothing expresses in that idiom of, her peop- of Juan Diego's people. So she's about 14 or 15 years old, and he's about 57 or so at the time. And it's interesting how she addresses him. She she constantly refers to him with these very tender terms of affection, my dearest little one, my little son, which is kind of a mysterious way for a young woman to address an older man. But he takes no offense at this, apparently, and because of his great humility, he does see himself as, as a little one. And also, uh, the fact is that he's only been baptized for a few years at this point when she's addressing him. So uh, Mary is our mother in the faith. She is the one who obtains for us the grace of uh, baptism, which is our birth then really into Christ. So in that sense, uh, he is just a little child in the faith. In any case, she has chosen him to carry out a mission of great importance, that is to 
persuade the bishop that uh, he is to build a chapel on the site where she's appeared so that she can work many great graces for the people. And in her choice, then, is this uh, instruction in the importance of humility. Because, just because he was humble does not mean that he was unimportant. Quite the contrary. Because of his great humility, he was chosen. And she said to him uh, an interesting thing. Let me see if I can find it. Listen to me, my youngest and dearest son. Know for sure that I do not lack servants and messengers to whom I can give the task of carrying out my words, who will carry out my will. But it is very necessary that you plead my cause, and with your help and through your mediation, that my will be fulfilled. My youngest and dearest son, I urge and firmly order you to go to the bishop again tomorrow. Tell him in my name and make him fully understand my intention that he start work on the chapel I'm requesting. Tell him again that I am the ever-virgin Holy Mary, the Mother of God, who is sending you. So with these words, uh, she confirms that it's not because of any special uh, ability or status that she's asking Juan Diego to do this. But she doesn't either let him off the hook because of his protests that he's a nobody and that the bishop won't pay any attention to him, which is in fact what happened the first time he went to talk to the bishop. The bishop dismissed him. And uh, that's when he was told to get a sign. And and that he did with the roses that uh, she directed him to pick. And, and when he presented those roses, then appeared that image on his tilma. Mary, in many ways, is the model that Juan Diego imitated, whether he knew it or not. Uh, she was the humble handmaid of the Lord, uh, never considering that she would be qualified or chosen to be the mother of God. She was a simple uh, handmaid of the Lord, vowed to virginity, and was perfectly content to remain as such. And that's when, through her holiness, through her perfect devotion to the will of God, uh, she brought down the Holy Spirit, that God chose her. And same, in the same way, Juan Diego, in his simplicity and in his humility, then drew the attention of Our Lady and was chosen for this important mission, which led then to the conversion of his people. The, the missionaries had been there for some years without any great success, but then through this intervention, Our Lady, uh, within a matter of years, converted the entire nation. And to this day, then, she is recognized as the Empress of the Americas. And humble Juan Diego had a key role in all of that. And like Mary, uh, not as perfectly, but in the end, he too said, let it be done to me according to thy word. And uh, after the apparition and after the chapel was built, uh, he dedicated the rest of his life to humble service as the custodian of the chapel and uh, to prayer, to greeting the pilgrims who came to the chapel. And so as we prepare ourselves for Christ the birth of Jesus at Christmas in a few weeks, let us rejoice in, in the choice of Our Lady and God's choice of the humble to instruct the wise and 
may we be humble and open to the Lord's will. Praise to be Jesus and Mary.